in this example, ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us to do is identify the domain. So just remember, um, in some of the more complicated problems that we're going to do, we always want to factor. But you guys can see in this example, there's nothing we can factor. So remember, our constraint when talking about the domain is whenever we have a variable in the denominator, we know that variable cannot make our denominator equal to 0. So therefore, what we need to do, identifying the domain, is we need to set our denominator equal to 0, and then solve. So x equals negative 3. And let's double check that. When x equals negative 3, does that make our denominator equal to 0? Yes, so that's not in our domain. So again, you're going to write the domain. Take a number line. Let's pretend these are all x values. 1, actually, let's go by 3s. 3, 6, 9, negative 3, negative 6, negative 9. You guys agree with me, this number line contains all the numbers, all real numbers left and right, right? Goes to positive infinity, goes to negative infinity, correct? But the graph, I can't, I can't write all the numbers, so therefore I use the arrows. But as I continue going to the left, it's going to go to negative infinity. And as I continue going to the right, it goes to positive infinity, right? So we want to show all the numbers except for one number, which is not in the domain, which is? So we put a open circle there, right? Remember graphing inequalities? Oh, well, all right, you're being smart now. Yes, it was negative 3, thank you. So we have negative 3 to 3. Right? So as an inequality, that's what that would look like. You could say negative infinity is less than x, which is less than infinity. That's how we'd write it as inequalities. To write it as interval notation, we say the farthest left is negative infinity, and it goes all the way, oops, sorry, that's negative 3. Goes all the way to negative 3, union, negative 3 to infinity. And that's it. Now, 